Hello everyone, welcome to National Standard Examination in Physics 2012. Two thermally insulated compartments 1 and 2 are filled with a perfect gas and are connected by a short tube having a valve which is closed. The pressures, volumes and absolute temperatures of the two compartments are respectively P1, V1, T1 and P2, V2, T2. After opening the valve, the temperature and the pressure of both the compartments respectively are. An inductance coil is connected to an AC source through a 60 ohm resistance in series. The source voltage, voltage across the coil and voltage across the resistance are found to be 33 volt, 27 volt and 12 volt respectively. Therefore, the resistance of the coil is. Voltage drop across the resistor Vr equal to 12 volt. Current through the resistor Ir equal to Vr by R that is 0.2 ampere. Voltage across the inductor coil Vl square equal to Vl square plus V small r square where small r is the resistance of the inductor coil. Supply voltage V square equal to Vl square plus Vr plus V small r whole square. Upon simplification, we get V small r equal to 9 volt from which we get a small r that is resistance of the inductance coil equal to 45 ohm. An ideal inductance coil is connected to a parallel plate capacitor. Electrical oscillation with energy W are set up in this circuit. The capacitor plates are slowly drawn apart till the frequency of oscillation is doubled. The work done in the process will be. Energy of the oscillations is W. Energy stored in the capacitor is Q square by 2C. Frequency of oscillations F equal to 1 by 2 pi root LC. Final frequency of oscillation is 2F. So the final capacitance will be F by 2F that is root of C dash by C from which we get C dash equal to C by 4. Work done in increasing the separation W dash equal to 2Q square by C minus Q square by 2C which comes out to be 3 times Q square by 2C so it is 3 times W. Two equal masses are connected by a spring satisfying Hooke's law and are placed on a frictionless table. The spring is elongated a little and allowed to go. Let the angular frequency of oscillation be omega. Now one of the masses is stopped, the square of the new angular frequency is. Effective mass of the system that is reduced mass mu equal to m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 which comes out to be m by 2. Angular frequency of oscillation omega equal to root k by mu that is root of 2k by m. Final angular frequency of oscillation omega dash equal to root k by m. So it is 1 by root 2 times root 2k by m which comes out to be omega by root 2. So the square of new angular frequency is omega square by 2. When a particle oscillates in simple harmonic motion, both its potential energy and kinetic energy vary sinusoidally with time. If nu be the frequency of the motion of the particle, the frequency associated with the kinetic energy is. Displacement of the particle in SHM x equal to a sin omega t that is a sin 2 pi nu t. Velocity of the particle in SHM v equal to dx by dt which is a omega cos 2 pi nu t. Kinetic energy of the particle in SHM k equal to half m a square that is a half m a square omega square cos square omega t which can be written as half m a square omega square of 1 plus cos 2 omega t by 2 that is half m a square omega square of half plus a half cos 2 omega t. So the kinetic energy is a total energy times half plus a half cos 2 omega t that is e by, by 2 plus e by 2 cos 2 omega t that is e by 2 plus e by 2 cos 4 pi nu t. So the frequency associated with the kinetic energy is 2 nu. A gas expands from I to F along three paths indicated. The work done along the three paths denoted by W1, W2 and W3 have the relationship. 
work done dw equal to pdv that is w equal to integral dw that is integral pdv which is nothing but area under force displacement graph in mechanics and area under pv graph in thermodynamics from the three diagrams we can easily conclude that w1 is less than w2 is less than w3 An ideal gas at 30 degrees centigrade enclosed in a cylinder with perfectly non-conducting sides and a piston moving without friction in it. The base of the cylinder is perfectly conducting. Cylinder is first placed on a heat source till the gas is heated to 100 degrees centigrade and the piston rises by 20 centimeter and the atmospheric pressure is 100 kilopascal. The piston is then held in final position and the cylinder is placed on the heat sink to cool the gas to 30 degrees centigrade, denoting Delta Q1 as heat supplied during the heating and Delta Q2 is the heat lost during cooling. Delta Q1 minus Delta Q2 would be equal to. Equal amounts of liquid helium and water at their respective boiling points are boiled by supplying the heat from identical heaters in time T helium and T water. The latent heats of vaporization of helium and water are 2.09 into 10 power 4 joule per kg and 540 kilocalorie per kg. Then T helium is amount of heat required to boil the liquid Q equal to ml. The heat required to boil liquid helium power into time that is energy equal to m into L helium. Heat required to boil water power into T water equal to m into L water where capital L is the latent heat of vaporization. Since heat is supplied from identical heaters, power is same. Taking the ratio we have T helium by T water equal to L helium by L water which comes out to be 0.0092 which is approximately 0.01. A 5 liter vessel contains 2 moles of oxygen at a pressure of 8 atmosphere. The average translational kinetic energy of an oxygen molecule under these conditions is Writing ideal gas equation PV equal to nRT 8 into 10 power 5 into 5 into 10 power minus 3 equal to 2RT which gives RT equal to 2000. Relation between R and K that is universal gas constant and Boltzmann's constant is R equal to K times NA. From there K equal to R by NA where NA is Avogadro number. The average translational kinetic energy of the molecule is 3 by 2 kt. So it is 3 by 2 times r by Na into t which simplifies to 4.98 into 10 power minus 21 joule. 6 identical conducting rods are joined as shown. The ends A and D are maintained at 200 degree centigrade and 20 degree centigrade respectively. No heat is lost to the surroundings. The temperature of the junction C will be. Temperature difference between the ends delta theta equal to 180 degree centigrade. Let the thermal resistance of each rod be R. Total thermal resistance of the system is 3R. Thermal current through the system I thermal equal to delta theta by R thermal that is 180 by 3R which is 60 by R. As the rods are in series combination, the current is same in all of them. Let the temperature at point Cx. So thermal current through Cd is 60 by R equal to x minus 20 by r which gives us x equal to 80 degree centigrade. Three corners of an equilateral triangle of side A are occupied by three charges of magnitude Q. If the charges are transferred to infinity, their kinetic energy will be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught times. Initial kinetic energy of the system is zero as the particles are at rest. Final potential energy is zero as the particles are separated by infinity. The initial potential energy is 3 times 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by a. Let the final kinetic energy be k. Applying conservation of energy, initial potential energy equal to final kinetic energy. So we get k equal to 3 times 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q square by a that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught times 3 q square by a. An LDR that is light dependent resistor is connected to an appropriate voltage source and a current measuring meter in series assuming that the LDR current is proportional to the intensity of incident light. 
the ldr is illuminated with light from a distance metal filament bulb the filament voltage v the distance d of ldr from the bulb and the ldr current i are noted if both v and d are doubled the ldr current is ldr light dependent resistor the resistance decreases with increase in intensity of light falling on it so the intensity of light is power by area that is p by 4 pi d square which can be written as v square by r into 4 pi d square so we have intensity is proportional to v square by d square since both v and d are doubled intensity remains same so the current will remain same a point source is placed at a distance of 30 cm from a convex lens of focal length f on its axis and the image is formed on the screen at a distance of 60 cm from the lens now the lens is split into two halves one half is moved perpendicular to the lens axis through a distance of 5 cm it is found that the two halves of the lens form two images on the screen and the images are separated by a distance d the value of f and d respectively object distance is 30 cm and image distance is 60 cm applying lens formula 1 by v minus 1 by u equal to 1 by f we get focal length of the lens to be 20 cm magnification provided by the lens m equal to image distance by object distance that is 2 magnification provided by the lens can also be written as height of the image by height of the object so 2 equal to height of the image by 5 which gives height of the image equal to 10 cm so the separation between the two images d equal to 5 plus 10 that is 15 cm The angle of refraction of a very thin prism is 1 degree. A light ray is incident normally on one of the refracting surfaces. The ray that ultimately emerges from the first surface after suffering reflection from the second surface makes an angle of 3.32 degrees with the normal. The deviation of the ray emerging from the second surface and the refractive index of the material of the prism respectively are see the diagram carefully for some time applying snell's law at m n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 that is n into sin 2 equal to 1 into sin 3.32 which gives n equal to 1.66 applying snell's law at n we have n1 sin theta 1 equal to n2 sin theta 2 1.66 sin 1 equal to 1 into sin e which gives us e equal to 1.66 so the angle of deviation delta equal to i plus e minus a so it is 0 plus 1.66 minus 1 which is 0.66 a beam of light from a distant axial point source is incident on the plane surface of a thin plano convex lens a real image is formed at a distance of 40 cm now if the curved surface is silvered The real image is formed at a distance of 7.5 cm the radius of curvature of the curved surface of the lens and the refractive index of the material of the lens respectively are before silvering applying lens makers formula 1 by f equal to mu minus 1 into 1 by r for plano convex lens 1 by 40 equal to mu minus 1 by r which gives us r plus 40 equal to 40 mu after silvering applying the silvering formula 1 by v plus 1 by u equal to 2 times mu2 by mu1 by r2 plus 2 times mu2 by mu1 minus 1 by r1 here r1 is infinity and mu1 is 1 so 1 by 7.5 plus 1 by infinity equal to 2 mu by r which gives us r equal to 15 mu from the above expressions we have mu equal to 1.6 and r equal to 24 cm a convex lens forms the image of an axial point on a screen the second lens with the focal length of f cm is placed between the screen and the first lens at a distance of 10 cm from the screen to view the image the screen has to be shifted away from the lens by 5 cm A third lens with focal length of the same magnitude f cm is used to replace the second lens at the same position but this time to view the image the screen has to be shifted towards the lens by d cm the value of f and d respectively are 
The second lens is concave lens. So 1 by V minus 1 by U equal to 1 by F. For concave lens, it is 1 by V minus 1 by U equal to minus 1 by F. So 1 by 15 minus 1 by 10 equal to minus 1 by F which gives us F equal to 30 centimeter. For the convex lens, 1 by V minus 1 by U equal to 1 by F. From where we get V equal to 7.5 centimeters. So the distance moved by the screen is D equal to 7.5 minus 5 that is 2.5 centimeter and the focal length is 30 centimeter. Serenkov effect. If the speed of an electron in a medium is greater than the speed of light in that medium, then the electron emits light. An electron beam in a medium is accelerated by a voltage V. The light that is emitted just suffers a total internal reflection at the boundary of the medium placed in air when the angle of incidence is 45 degrees. The value of voltage is Critical angle is given to be 45 degree. Refract index of the medium n equal to 1 by sin c that is root 2. Speed of light in medium v equal to c by n that is 3 into 10 power 8 by root 2. Applying work energy theorem w net equal to delta k here ev equal to half m v square from which we have e by m into 2v equal to v square. So it is 2 into 1.76 into 10 power 11 into v equal to 9 into 10 power 16 by 2 which gives us v to be equal to 127.8 kilo volt. In an electrolytic process certain amount of charge liberates 0.8 gram of oxygen then the amount of silver liberated by the same amount of charge is. Electrochemical equivalent of silver is 3118 microgram per coulomb. Electrochemical equivalent of oxygen is 83 microgram per coulomb. Amount of metal liberated M equal to Z into Q where Z is electrochemical equivalent. Given charge is same in both cases so M is proportional to Z. So M oxygen by M silver equal to Z oxygen by Z silver 0.8 by mass of silver equal to 83 by 318 which gives us mass of silver equal to 10.8 gram. The energy state of doubly ionized lithium having the same energy as that of the first excited state of hydrogen is. Energy of nth orbit of hydrogen atom is minus 13.6 by n square so minus 13.6 by 2 square which is minus 3.4 electron volt. Energy of nth orbit of hydrogen like atom is minus 13.6 by n square into z square where z is atomic number. For doubly ionized lithium atom it is minus 13.6 by n square into 9 which is minus 122.4 by n square electron volt. Given minus 122.4 by n square equal to minus 3.4 which gives us n to be 6. The logic circuit shown below is equivalent to. Let us analyze the circuit uh, one gate at a time. Output of first R gate is x plus y bar. Output of the second R gate is X bar plus X plus Y bar whole bar which is X bar plus X bar Y which is X bar of 1 plus Y which is X bar. So the final output Z equal to X double bar which is equal to X. So the logic circuit is equivalent to fourth option. In the circuit shown below, the potential of A with respect to B of the capacitor C is. Under steady state conditions, the capacitor is fully charged, hence it acts as an open circuit. Applying KVL around loop PQRSP, we have 1 minus 20i minus 10i minus 2.5 equal to 0, which gives us i equal to 1 by 20 ampere. Applying KVL around the loop, a T S R U B we have V A minus 0 0.5 plus 2.5 minus 10 into 1 by 20 minus V B equal to 0 which gives us V A minus V B equal to minus 1.5 volt. Two pendulums differ in length by 22 centimeter. They oscillate at the same place so that one of them makes 30 oscillations and the other makes 36 oscillations during the same time. The length in centimeter of the pendulums are 
at the length of the first pendulum be l centimeter then the length of the second pendulum is l plus 22 centimeter let the time taken by the pendulums be t the time period of oscillation of first pendulum is t by 36 the time period of oscillation of the second pendulum is t by 30 time period of a simple pendulum t equal to 2 pi root l by g so t is proportional to square root of l so we have t1 by t2 equal to root l1 by l2 that is t by 36 by t by 30 equal to root of l by l plus 22 which uses l to be equal to 50 centimeter the voltage drop across a forward bias diode is 0.7 volt in the following circuit the voltage across the 10 ohms resistance in series with the diode and 20 ohm resistance r voltage drop across the diode is 0.7 volt let the potential at c f and d b x potential at b e and a b 10 volt taking the potential at g to be 0 applying kcl 10 minus 0.7 minus x by 10 plus 10 minus x by 20 equal to x minus 0 by 10 that is 9.3 minus x plus 10 minus x by 2 equal to x which gives us x to be 5.72 volt now the voltage across 10 ohms resistor is 10 minus 0.7 minus 5.72 which is 3.58 volt voltage across 20 ohm resistor is 10 minus 5.72 which is 4.28 volt the magnetic flux phi through a stationary loop of wire having a resistance r varies with time as phi equal to a t square plus b t a and b are positive constants the average emf and the total charge flowing in the loop in the time interval t equal to 0 to t equal to tau respectively r. Magnetic flux through the stationary wire loop phi equal to a t square plus b t. EMF at any time e equal to minus d phi by dt that is minus d by dt times a t square plus b t which comes out to be minus 2 a t minus b. Average EMF e average equal to 1 by tau integral 0 to tau minus 2 a t minus b of dt which comes out to be a tau plus b in magnitude current through the coil i equal to e by r so a tau plus b by r charge flowing through the coil dq equal to i dt so q equal to 0 to tau i dt which upon simplification comes out to be a tau square plus b tau by r Three waves of same amplitude have frequencies n minus 1, n and n plus 1 hertz. They superimpose on one another to produce beats. The number of beats produced per second is. Let the sound waves be represented by the following equations. Y1 equal to A sin omega 1t that is A sin 2 pi n t. Y2 equal to A sin omega 2t. A sin 2 pi times n minus 1 into t that is a sin 2 pi n t minus 2 pi t y3 equal to a sin omega 3 t that is a sin 2 pi times n plus 1 into t that is a sin 2 pi n t plus 2 pi t resultant displacement y equal to y1 plus y2 plus y3 so y equal to a sin 2 pi n t plus a sin 2 pi n t minus 2 pi t plus a sin 2 pi n t plus 2 pi t so y equal to a, a sin 2 pi n t plus 2a sin 2 pi n t cos 2 pi t which is uh, y equal to a sin 2 pi n t times 1 plus 2 cos 2 pi t let us say r sin 2 pi n t the resultant amplitude r equal to a of 1 plus 2 cos 2 pi t angular frequency of this amplitude variation omega equal to 2 pi that gives us a time period equal to one second so the beat frequency that is the number of beats produced per second is two a spherical ball of mass m1 collides head on with another ball of mass m2 at rest the collision is elastic the fraction of kinetic energy lost by m1 is initial kinetic energy of the first ball k1 initially equal to half m1 u square velocity of the first ball after collision v1 equal to 
m1 minus m2 by m1 plus m2 into u final kinetic energy of the first ball k1 final equal to half m1 v1 square that is a half m1 m1 minus m2 by m1 plus m2 whole square into u square that is k1 final equal to half m1 u square of m1 minus m2 by m1 plus m2 whole square which is k1 initial times m1 minus m2 by m1 plus m2 whole square loss of kinetic energy delta k equal to k1 initial minus k1 final that is k1 initial minus k1 initial times m1 minus m2 by m1 plus m2 whole square upon simplification we have delta k by k1 initial equal to 4 times m1 m2 by m1 plus m2 whole square in the circuit shown below the switch is in position 1 for a long time at some moment after that the switch is thrown to position 2 the quantity of heat generated in the resistance of 375 ohm after the switch is changed to position 2 is when the switch is in position 1 energy stored in the capacitor u equal to half cv square that is 0.25 joule when the switch is changed to position 2 same discharge current flows through both the resistors so heat generated in resistor h equal to i square rt since the current is the same heat generated is proportional to resistance so h equal to 375 by 375 plus 250 into 0.25 which is 0.15 joule A conducting square frame of side A and a long straight wire carrying current I are located in the same plane as shown in figure. The frame moves to the right with a constant velocity V. The EMF induced in the frame will be proportional to. Magnetic field due to straight current carrying conductor at a distance R B equal to mu naught by 2 pi I by R. As the square frame moves, EMF is induced only in AB and CD. Motional EMF E equal to BLV, EAB equal to B into A into V that is mu naught by 2 pi I by X minus A by 2 into AV which is mu naught by 2 pi 2AVI by 2X minus A. Similarly, ECD equal to BAV that is mu naught by 2 pi I by X plus A by 2 into AV which is mu naught by 2 pi. 2AVI by 2X plus A. The net EMF E equal to EAB minus ECD. Upon simplification, we get it as mu naught by 2 pi 4A square VI by 2X minus A into 2X plus A. So the induced EMF in the frame is proportional to 1 by 2X minus A 2X plus A. In the circuit shown below, the switch S is closed at the moment T equal to 0. As a result, the voltage across the capacitor C will change with time as. Time constant of the network tau equal to R by 2 into C. Maximum charge on the capacitor Q max equal to C times V by 2 that is 50 C. The charge on the capacitor Q equal to Q max times 1 minus E power minus T by RC. Voltage across the capacitor Vc equal to 50 of 1 minus e power minus 2t by Rc. So at t equal to 0, Vc equal to 50 of 1 minus 1 that is 0 volt and at t equal to infinity Vc equal to 50 of 1 minus 0 that is 50 volt. So the correct option is C. The ratio of the rotational kinetic energy to the total kinetic energy of 1 mole of a gas of rigid diatomic molecules is. The gas consists of diatomic molecules. Number of rotational degrees of freedom is 2. Number of translational degrees of freedom is 3. Energy associated with each degree of freedom is half RT per mole. So the rotational kinetic energy is 2 times half RT. Translational kinetic energy is 3 times half RT. So the total kinetic energy comes out to be 5 times half RT. The ratio of rotational to total kinetic energy K rotational to K 2 times half RT by 5 times half RT that is 2 by 5.
A metal cylinder of length L is subjected to a uniform compressive force F as shown in figure. The material of the cylinder has Young's modulus Y and Poisson's ratio mu. The change in volume of the cylinder is Young's modulus Y equal to FL by A delta L that is FL square by V into delta L. So delta L by L equal to FL by VY. Poisson's ratio mu equal to lateral strain by longitudinal strain that is minus delta R by R by delta L by L from which we have delta R by R equal to minus mu times delta L by L. Volume of the metal cylinder V equal to pi R square L. Applying log on both sides and differentiate, we have delta V by V equal to 2 times delta R by R plus delta L by L. So delta V equal to V times minus 2 mu delta L by L plus delta L by L that is delta L by L times minus 2 mu plus 1 of V. So the change in volume delta V equal to minus 2 mu plus 1 of V into FL by VY which ultimately comes out to be 1 minus 2 mu times FL by Y. Three persons A, B and C note the time taken by their train to cover the distance between two successive stations by observing the digital clocks on the platforms of the two stations. The clocks display time in hours and minutes. The three persons find the intervals 3, 5 and 4 minutes respectively. Assume the maximum discrepancy of 2 seconds in actual starting and stopping of the train and the observations by A, B and C then. All A, B and C can be correct. Only A and B or B and C can be correct. Only one of A, B and C can be correct. C is correct since it is equal to the average of the three observations. Since the clocks display time in hours and minutes, the discrepancy of maximum two seconds does not appear in the observations. So all the three persons are present in the same train. So only one of A, B and C can be correct as all of them are observing the time taken for the same event. When two drops of water collise, which of the following is correct? Total surface area decreases, there is some rise in temperature. Let the radius of each drop be r, then the surface area of each drop is 4 pi r square and the total surface area is 4 pi capital R square. When the drops collise, total volume remains the same. So capital V equal to 2 times small v, 4 third pi r cube equal to 2 times 4 third pi small r cube. From which we get r square equal to 2 power 2 by 3 into small r square. So the total surface area decreases. Energy is released when droplets of radius r collide to form water drop of radius capital R. W equal to change in surface area into surface tension that is delta A into T which is 4 pi T times nr square minus r square. The so released energy raises the temperature of the water drop. Two capacitors 0.5 microfarad and 1.0 microfarad in series are connected to a DC source of 30 volt. The voltages across the capacitors respectively are for series combination of capacitors Q1 equal to Q2 that is C1 V1 equal to C2 V2 from where we have V1 by V2 equal to C2 by C1. From the above relation we can write V1 equal to C2 by C1 plus C2 into V that is 20 volt. Applying loop theorem V equal to V1 plus V2 we have V2 equal to V minus V1 which comes out to be 10 volt. The thorium-90-232 nucleus has a successive alpha and beta decays to the end product lead-80-208. The number of alpha and beta particles emitted in the process respectively. The parent nucleus is thorium-90-232 and the daughter nucleus is lead-80-208. In alpha decay, atomic number reduces by 2 units and mass number reduces by 4 units. In beta decay, atomic number increases by 1 unit and mass number remains the same. Let there be n alpha decays and m beta decays. So for atomic number 90 minus 2n plus m equal to 82. For mass number 232 minus 4n plus m into 0 equal to 208. Upon solving these two equations, we have n equal to 6 and m equal to 4. 
If the breakdown field of air is 2.0 into 10 power 6 volt per meter, the maximum charge that can be given to a sphere of diameter 10 cm is. Given breakdown field of air E equal to 2.0 into 10 power 6 volt per meter, diameter of the sphere D equal to 10 cm, so the radius is 5 into 10 power minus 2 meter. Electric field intensity on the surface of the sphere E equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q by R square that is 9 into 10 power 9 q by 25 into 10 power minus 4. 2 into 10 power 6 equal to 9 into 10 power 9 q by 25 into 10 power minus 4 which gives us q equal to 5.6 into 10 power minus 7 coulomb. Density of ocean water varies with depth. This is due to relation between volume and density m equal to rho v Apply log on both sides, log m equal to log rho plus log v. Differentiating the above expression, we have 0 equal to delta rho by rho plus delta v by v, which gives us delta rho by rho v equal to minus delta v by v. Bulk modulus of elasticity b equal to delta p by minus delta v by v, that is delta p by delta rho by rho. Upon rearranging the terms, we have rho equal to rho naught by 1 minus delta p by b. So here rho is density at a given depth, rho naught is density at the surface. So the correct option is A. A spring of certain length and spring constant k is cut into two pieces of lengths in the ratio 1 is to 2. The spring constant of the two pieces are in the ratio. Let L be the length of the spring. Spring constant is given to be k. The spring is cut into two parts, L1 by L2 equal to 1 by 2. Applying Hooke's law, f equal to minus kx. Here x is elongation and x modulus y equal to fl by ax. From there f equal to yax by l. From the above two equations we get k equal to ya by l which gives us k is proportional to 1 by l. So the ratio of spring constant is 2 is to 1. When a metal surface is illuminated with light of wavelength lambda the stopping potential is v0. When the same surface is illuminated with light of wavelength 2 lambda, the stopping potential is V0 by 4. If the velocity of light in air is C, the threshold frequency of photoelectric emission is. Einstein's photoelectric equation E equal to 5 plus EV0 that is HC by lambda equal to 5 plus EV0. In the first case, HC by lambda equal to 5 plus EV0 from which EV0 equal to HC by lambda minus 5. In the second case, HC by 2 lambda equal to 5 plus EV0 by 4. So HC by 2 lambda equal to 5 plus HC by lambda minus 5 by 4 which gives us nu0 to be equal to C by 3 lambda. Two elastic waves move along the same direction in the same medium. The pressure amplitudes of both the waves are equal but the wavelengths of first wave is 3 times that of the second. If the average power transmitted through unit area by the first wave is W1 and that by second wave is W2 then average power transmitted through unit area is known as intensity given pressure amplitude is same so delta P max is same for both. Also given lambda 1 equal to 3 lambda 2. Since both the waves are moving in the same medium they have same speed. Since both the waves are moving in the same medium bulk modulus is also same. So intensity of elastic waves W equal to V times delta P max whole square by 2B which gives us W1 equal to W2. A cube floats both in water and in liquid of specific gravity 0.8. Therefore, the apparent weight of the cube is the same in water and the liquid. The cube has displaced equal volume of water and the liquid while floating. The cube has displaced equal weight of water and liquid while floating. If some weights are placed on the top surface of the cube to make it just sink, the load in case of water will be 0.8 times that to be used in the case of liquid. Density of the liquid rho L equal to 0.8 gram per cc. Density of water is 1 gram per cc. Applying loss of flotation, gravitational force equal to buoyancy force. V rho g equal to V liquid rho liquid g which gives us V liquid by V equal to rho by rho liquid. Apparent weight equal to true weight minus buoyancy force that is mg minus m dash g that is V rho g minus V liquid rho liquid g which can be written as V rho g minus 
ರೋ ವಿ ಬೈ ರೋಯಲ್ ಇಂಟು ರೋಯಲ್ ಇಂಟು ಜಿ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಜೀರೋ ವಾಲ್ಯೂಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಡ್ ವಿ ಎಲ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ರೋ ವಿ ಬೈ ರೋಯಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಲಿಕ್ವಿಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ಡ್ ಎಮ್ ಎಲ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ವಿ ಎಲ್ ಇಂಟು ರೋಯಲ್ ವಿಚ್ ಈಸ್ ರೋ ಇಂಟು ವಿ ಸೊ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಎ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೈನೆಟಿಕ್ ಥೀರಿ ಆಫ್ ಗ್ಯಾಸಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕಂಪೇರ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೈಡ್ರೋಜನ್ ವಿತ್ ಒನ್ ಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ಗಾನ್ ಬೋತ್ ಅಟ್ ಝೀರೋ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಸೆಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಡ್ ದೆನ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಆವರೇಜ್ ಕೈನೆಟಿಕ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಸೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಬೋತ್ ಕೇಸಸ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ದಿ ಆವರೇಜ್ ಪೊಟೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಬೋತ್ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಇಂಟರ್ನಲ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಇನ್ ಬೋತ್ ಕೇಸಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ವೆನ್ ಬೋತ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಯಾಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಹೀಟೆಡ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಒನ್ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಸೆಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಡ್ ದ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಡೆಡ್ ಟು ಬೋತ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಒನ್ ಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೈಡ್ರೋಜನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ಗಾನ್ ಬೋತ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಆರ್ ಅಟ್ ಝೀರೋ ಡಿಗ್ರಿ ಸೆಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಡ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೂ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಕೆಲ್ವಿನ್ ಆವರೇಜ್ ಕೈನೆಟಿಕ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮಾಲಿಕ್ಯೂಲ್ ಈಸ್ ತ್ರೀ ಬೈ ಟು ಕೆ ಟಿ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಡೆಡ್ ಟು ಎ ಗ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂರಿಂಗ್ ಹೀಟಿಂಗ್ ಡಿ ಕ್ಯೂ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಎನ್ ಸಿ ಪಿ ಡಿ ಟಿ ಮೋಲಾರ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಕೆಪಾಸಿಟಿ ಅಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಈಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಬೈ ಫೈವ್ ಆರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹೈಡ್ರೋಜನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಏಟ್ ಬೈ ತ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆರ್ಗಾನ್ ಸೊ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಎ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿ ಆರ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ವೈಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಇಂಜಿನ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ದಟ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಫುಲ್ಲಿ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಮೆಕ್ಯಾನಿಕಲ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲಾ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮೋಡೈನಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ನೆಸೆಸರಿ ಬಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸಫಿಷಿಯೆಂಟ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ನೋ ಸರ್ಕಮ್ಸ್ಟಾನ್ಸಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಫ್ಲೋ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಲೋವರ್ ಟು ಹೈಯರ್ ಟೆಂಪ್ರೇಚರ್ಸ್ ಎ ಬಾಡಿ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಕೂಲ್ಡ್ ಟು ಆಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಝೀರೋ ಎಫಿಷಿಯನ್ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಇಂಜಿನ್ ಈಟ್ ಆ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ವರ್ಕ್ ಡನ್ ಬೈ ಹೀಟ್ ಇನ್ಪುಟ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಬ್ಲ್ಯೂ ಬೈ ಕ್ಯೂ ಹೆಚ್ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ರಿಟನ್ ಆಸ್ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಕ್ಯೂ ಸಿ ಬೈ ಕ್ಯೂ ಹೆಚ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಒನ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಟಿ ಸಿ ಬೈ ಟಿ ಹೆಚ್ ಎಫಿಷಿಯನ್ಸಿ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಹೀಟ್ ಇಂಜಿನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ನೆವರ್ ಬಿ ಒನ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟಿ ಸಿ ಝೀರೋ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎನಿ ಹೀಟ್ ಇಂಜಿನ್ ಟು ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಹೀಟ್ ಫುಲ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ ಟು ವರ್ಕ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲಾ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮೋಡೈನಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಿಯಲಿ ಲಾ ಆಫ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ವೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸರ್ನ್ ವಿತ್ ಎನರ್ಜಿ ಕನ್ವರ್ಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಒನ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಟು ಅನದರ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಗಿವ್ ಎನಿ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಷನ್ ವೆದರ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಸೆಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಸೊ ಎ ಬಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿ ಆರ್ ಕರೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ದಿ ರೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಂಗ್ಲರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟರ್ನಲ್ ಟಾರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಿಕ್ಸ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ಎನ್ ಎನರ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಫ್ರೇಮ್ ಇನ್ ಲೀನಿಯರ್ ಆಕ್ಸಲರೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ರೊಟೇಟ್ರಿ ಮೋಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನಲ್ ಮೋಷನ್ ಆಂಗ್ಲರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸಿಂಗಲ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಎಲ್ ಬಾರ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಆರ್ ಬಾರ್ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಪಿ ಬಾರ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಆರ್ ಬಾರ್ ಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಎಮ್ ವಿ ಬಾರ್ ಆಂಗ್ಲರ್ ಮೊಮೆಂಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಎ ಸೆಂಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಎಲ್ ಸಿ ಎಮ್ ಬಾರ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಆರ್ ಸಿ ಎಮ್ ಬಾರ್ ಇಂಟು ಎಮ್ ಇಂಟು ವಿ ಸಿ ಎಮ್ ಬಾರ್ ವೇರ್ ಎಮ್ ಈಸ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಮಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಶಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಕ್ವ
and generate thermal energy the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons is dependent on the intensity of radiation since photons are absorbed as a single unit there is no significant time delay in the emission of photoelectrons so statement a is correct only a small fraction of incident photons succeed in ejecting the photoelectrons while most of them are absorbed by the system as a whole and generate thermal energy so statement c is correct A parallel combination of an inductor coil and a resistance of 60 ohm is connected to an AC source. The current in the coil, current in the resistance and the source current are respectively 3 ampere, 2.5 ampere and 4.5 ampere. Therefore, since the inductor and the resistor are in parallel, potential difference is same. So we can write VR equal to VL, IR into R equal to IL into ZL. that is 2.5 into 60 equal to 3 times zl which gives zl equal to 50 ohm from the current triangle i equal to root of ir square plus il square plus 2 times ir il cos theta which gives us cos theta equal to 1 by 3 power factor of the inductor coil cos theta equal to r by z so 1 by 3 equal to r by 50 which gives r equal to 50 by 3 ohm electrical power dissipated in the coil p equal to i square r so it is 9 into 50 by 3 150 v watt impedance of the circuit 1 by z equal to 1 by r plus 1 by j times xl that is 1 by z equal to root of 1 by r whole square plus 1 by z whole square plus 2 times 1 by r 1 by z cos theta which gives us the value of z to be 33.3 ohm so b c and d are correct The nuclear forces are stronger being roughly 100 times that of the electromagnetic forces have a short range dominant over a distance of about few fermi are center forces independent of the spin of the nucleons are independent of the nuclear charge let us try to understand the properties of nuclear forces one by one nuclear force is the strongest force in nature it is almost 100 times stronger than electromagnetic force nuclear force is a short range it is effective only when the nucleons are inside the nucleus that is uh, the distance is of the order of 1 fermi 10 power minus 15 meter nuclear force is a non central force it depends on the spin of the nucleons nuclear force is charge independent magnitude of force is same between uh, two protons two neutrons and a proton and a neutron so a b and d are correct Consider a mole of sample of hydrogen gas at NTP. The volume of the gas is exactly 2.24 into 10 power minus 2 meter cube. The volume of the gas is approximately 2.24 into 10 power minus 2 meter cube. The gas will be in thermal equilibrium with one mole of oxygen at NTP. The gas will be in thermodynamic equilibrium with one mole of oxygen at NTP. One mole of hydrogen gas is taken at NTP. applying ideal gas equation we have pv equal to nrt so v equal to nrt by p which is 2.4 into 10 power minus 2 meter cube thermal equilibrium both gases are at the same temperature thermodynamic equilibrium it is mechanical equilibrium as well as thermal equilibrium both gases are at the same pressure and temperature so b c and d options are correct A particle moves in one dimension in a conservative force field. The potential energy is depicted in the graph below. If the particle starts to move from rest from point A, then given the particle starts from rest at A, so the particle should come to rest at E. Relation between force and potential energy, F equal to minus du by dx, that is negative slope of potential energy x curve. Slope of the curve at points B, C, and D is zero. so the force at these points is zero so a and c are correct options a conductor having a resistance r independent of temperature and thermal capacity c is initially at temperature t not same as that of the surrounding at t equal to zero it is connected to a source with a constant voltage v the thermal power dissipated by the conductor to the surroundings varies as q equal to k times T minus T naught determine the temperature T of the conductor 
at any time t and at a time t equal to c by k given resistance of the conductor is independent of temperature power dissipated to the surroundings q equal to k times t minus t not power supply to the conductor p equal to v square by r power retained by the conductor dq by dt equal to p minus q that is v square by r minus k times t minus t not so we can write c times dt by dt equal to v square by r minus k times t minus t not upon rearranging the ter terms we have 1 by v square by r minus k times t minus t not dt equal to 1 by c dt integrating between the limits t not to t and 0 to t we have ln v square by r minus k times t minus t not equal to minus 1 by k equal to t by c putting the limits in the integration ln v square by r minus kt plus kt not minus ln v square by r minus kt not plus kt not equal to minus kt by c that is ln v square by r minus kt plus kt not by v square by r equal to minus kt by c ultimately this gives the expression for temperature as t equal to t naught plus v square by k r of 1 minus e power minus k t by c. Temperature of the conductor at t equal to c by k, t equal to t naught of plus v square by k r of 1 minus e power minus k t by c. Putting the value of t in this expression, we have t equal to t naught plus v square by k r of 1 minus e power minus 1. A particle moves rectilinearly in an electric field E equal to E naught minus AX where A is a positive constant and X is the distance from the point where the particle is initially at rest. Let the particle has a specific charge Q by M. Find the distance covered by the particle till the moment at which it once again comes to rest. Acceleration of the particle at this moment. Initial velocity of the particle is zero force acting on the particle f equal to eq that is q times e naught minus ax acceleration of the particle a equal to f by m that is q by m times e naught minus a minus ax acceleration can be written as dv by dt so dv by dt equal to q by m e naught minus ax upon rearranging the terms we have v dv equal to q by m e naught minus ax dx integrating between the limits of 0 to v you have integral 0 to v, v dv equal to q by m integral 0 to x, e naught minus ax dx. From where we get the expression for velocity as root 2q by m e naught x minus ax square by 2. This velocity becomes a 0 when e naught x minus ax square by 2 is a 0 which gives us x equal to 0 or x equal to 2 e naught by a. Acceleration of the particle A equal to Q by M times E naught minus AX which is uh, Q by M times E naught minus A into 2 E naught by A which simplifies to minus Q by M times E naught. One mole of an ideal gas gamma equal to 1.4 with initial pressure of 2 atmosphere and temperature 57 degrees centigrade is taken to twice its volume through different processes that include isothermal, isobaric and adiabatic processes. Determine the process where maximum work is done and the amount of work done in this case. By what percentage is this work larger than the work done in a process in which it is least. Initial volume of the gas V equal to nRT by P which is 1354.2 into 10 power minus 5 meter cube. Work done in isobaric process w1 equal to p delta v that comes out to be 2750 joule work done in isothermal process w2 equal to 2.3026 nrt log v2 by v1 that comes out to be 1901.5 joule relation between volume and temperature in adiabatic process tv power gamma minus 1 equal to constant so 330 v power gamma minus 1 equal to T2 into 2V power gamma minus 1 which gives us T2 equal to 250 Kelvin. 
వర్క్ డన్ ఇన్ అడియాబాటిక్ ప్రాసెస్ డబ్ల్యూ త్రీ ఈక్వల్ టు ఎన్ఆర్ బై బై గామా మైనస్ వన్ టి వన్ మైనస్ టి టూ విచ్ సింప్లిఫైస్ టు వన్ సిక్స్ సిక్స్ టూ పాయింట్ ఎయిట్ జౌల్ సో ద మ్యాక్సిమమ్ వర్క్ ఈజ్ డన్ ఇన్ ఐసోబారిక్ ప్రాసెస్ పర్సంటేజ్ డిఫరెన్స్ ఇన్ వర్క్ టూ సెవెన్ ఫైవ్ జీరో మైనస్ వన్ సిక్స్ సిక్స్ టూ పాయింట్ ఎయిట్ బై వన్ సిక్స్ సిక్స్ టూ పాయింట్ ఎయిట్ ఇంటూ హండ్రెడ్ దట్ ఈస్ సిక్స్టీ ఫైవ్ పాయింట్ ఫోర్ పర్సెంట్ ఏ రైల్వే క్యారేజ్ ఆఫ్ మాస్ ఎంసి ఫిల్డ్ విత్ సాండ్ ఆఫ్ మాస్ ఎంఎస్ మూవ్స్ అలాంగ్ రైల్స్ ద క్యారేజ్ ఈజ్ గివెన్ అన్ ఇంపల్స్ అండ్ ఇట్ స్టార్ట్స్ విత్ వెలాస్టి వి నాట్ అట్ ది సేమ్ టైమ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అబ్జర్వ్ దట్ ది సాండ్ స్టార్ట్స్ లీకింగ్ త్రూ ఏ హోల్ అట్ ది బాటమ్ ఆఫ్ ది క్యారేజ్ అట్ ఏ కాన్స్టెంట్ మాస్ రేట్ ఆఫ్ ల్యామ్డా ఫైండ్ ది డిస్టెన్స్ అట్ విచ్ ద క్యారేజ్ బికమ్స్ ఎంటీ అండ్ ది వెలాసిటీ అటైండ్ బై ది క్యారేజ్ అట్ దట్ టైమ్ నెగ్లెక్ట్ ఫ్రిక్షన్ అలాంగ్ ది రైల్స్ ది జనరల్ ఈక్వేషన్ ఫర్ వేరియబుల్ మాస్ సిస్టమ్ ఎఫ్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ప్లస్ వి రిలేటివ్ ఇంటూ డిఎం బై డిటి ఈక్వల్ టు ఎం డివి బై డిటి హియర్ ఎఫ్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఈజ్ నెట్ ఎక్స్టర్నల్ ఫోర్స్ యాక్టింగ్ ఆన్ ది సిస్టమ్ వి రిలేటివ్ ఈజ్ ది రిలేటివ్ ఎస్టీ ఆఫ్ ది ఇన్కమింగ్ ఆర్ ఎస్కేపింగ్ మాస్ విత్ రెస్పెక్ట్ టు సెంటర్ ఆఫ్ మాస్ ఆఫ్ ది సిస్టమ్ వి ఈజ్ వెలాసిటీ ఆఫ్ ది సిస్టమ్ as the sand is leaking out from the bottom perpendicular to the velocity of the carriage v relative is zero there is no external force acting on the system so f external equal to zero from the general equation we can write zero plus zero lambda equal to m dv by dt so dv by dt is zero giving us v is a constant distance traveled by the carriage s equal to v into t that is v not into ms by lambda show that for any angle of incidence on a prism symbols have their usual meaning sin half of a plus delta by sin half of a equal to mu times cos half of r1 minus r2 by cos half of i minus e and the right hand side reduces to mu at minimum deviation see the diagram carefully for different angles mentioned in the diagram at the point of incidence applying snell's law 1 into sin i equal to mu sin r1 at the point of emergence mu into sin r2 equal to 1 into sin e adding both the equations sin i plus sin e equal to mu times sin r1 plus sin r2 taking the trigonometric expression for sin a plus sin b 2 sin i plus e by 2 cos i minus e by 2 equal to mu into 2 sin r1 plus r2 by 2 cos r1 minus r2 by 2 which simplifies to sin i plus e by 2 by sin r1 plus r2 by 2 equal to mu times cos r1 minus r2 by 2 by cos i minus e by 2. From the diagram r1 plus r2 equal to a to a and i plus e equal to a plus delta that implies sin i plus e by 2 by sin r1 plus r2 by 2 equal to sin half of a plus delta by sin half of a from minimum deviation condition r1 equal to r2 and e equal to e we can write mu times cos r1 minus r2 by 2 by cos i minus e by 2 equal to mu times cos 0 by cos 0 which is mu a small amount of solution containing sodium 24 nucleides with activity 20500 disintegrations per second was injected in the blood stream of a person the activity of 1 milliliter of blood sample taken after 5 hour was found to be 20 disintegrations per minute the half life of the radioactive nucleide is 15 hour find the volume of the blood of this person Activity of the radioactive nucleide R equal to 20,500 disintegrations per second. Activity of the blood sample 1 ml R equal to 20 disintegrations per minute that is 1 by 3 disintegrations per second. Half-life of the radioactive nucleide T equal to 15 hour. The time interval at which the sample is collected is T equal to 5 hours. Activity of the sample per ml R equal to r by v e power minus lambda t that is r by v e power minus 0.693 by t into t which gives us v equal to 3 into 20,500 into e power minus 0.231 which is 61,500 by e power 0.231 ml.
The wire loop shown in the figure lies in a uniform magnetic induction B equal to B0 cos omega t perpendicular to its plane. Find the amplitude of current induced in the loop if its resistance is 0.1 ohm per meter. Given R1 equal to 10 and R2 equal to 20 centimeter, B0 is 20 milli tesla and omega is 100 pi radian per second. Net magnet flux phi equal to B times A2 minus A1 induced EMF E equal to D5 by DT that is DB by DT times A2 minus A1. Current I equal to E by R that is A2 minus A1 by R into D by DT of B0 cos omega t which comes out to be B0 omega times A2 minus A1 by R into sin omega t. Substituting the numerical values we have the amplitude of current that is maximum value to be pi ampere.